WRKS Pickens Jackson. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Now live, live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. You are listening to Mississippi's number one sports talk show, The Out of Bounds Show with Bo Bounds. Streaming worldwide live on the Out of Bounds radio app and on your radio at ESPN 105.9. The Soul. And we're back. Hour number two of the Out of Bounds Show. Uh, brought to you by the Bacon Wrap Shrimp, Scallops, 10-ounce filet, medium rare, Kessel Prime in the Renaissance. Pair it with uh, Four Roses Single Barrel. Old-fashioned. KesselPrime.com to make a reservation. Good morning, good morning. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. Super article on Bank Plus, djournal.com. Djournal.com. Really good piece on uh, on Bank Plus. Welcome in, welcome in. Show me the money was fun. I'm I'm excited about that. Got to make that paper. That's funny. That's a funny liner. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I I wonder if we could do that twice a week. Not to think about that, but at least we did it this week. We missed it last week, so uh, that was that was Blake Blakey Blakester's fault. I'm your host, Bo Bounds, Farm Bureau Insurance call in line, 601 707 3750. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. They'll take care of you. Uh, Twitter handle at Bo Bounds, driven by the Continental Tires at 49 Tire in Richland, Mississippi, 49tire.com. And then, of course, uh, hit us up on our famous text line. The Mississippi Ag, John Deere Tractor, text line 601-885-3776. We're streaming live on the Out of Bounds radio app, and you can listen to the MRAJA championship game, 115 Saturday, Veterans Memorial Stadium. You can listen to that game on the Out of Bounds radio app. If someone from out of the listening area wants to listen to it, if you're going to be on a ball field, coaching someone or watching someone play in some kind of activity, you can stream the game. Earbuds in, out of bounds, radio app, MRA, JA, 115, Veterans Memorial Stadium. And uh, it makes sense that as one of our listeners texts us, you know, once the SEC schedule got moved around, you know, they couldn't host the MHSAA. So the MHSAA will also be at Veterans Memorial Stadium. That that would be Mississippi State, uh, which makes sense. You know, they're they're, they're I, is that is that December fifth weekend? I don't know if it is. That makes sense because they host Missouri. Should be hosting Missouri for a home game as uh, Mississippi State and Ole Miss will play not this weekend but next weekend, and then they they have games after that, um, and could have more than one, um, just kind of depending on how this plays out. But MSU playing Missouri, and then MSU playing, I'm sorry, Ole Miss playing LSU. I do real quick want to say congratulations to Reggie Perry and Robert Woodard, two Mississippi State basketball players that were drafted in the second round last night. They're good players. Um, Their best balls ahead of them, I don't really know what they'll be as NBA players. Woodard, to me, looks like a guy that could have more success, but Reggie's very talented and athletic and has a, a nice shooting stroke for a big man. Um, and he's going to be asked to hit some threes. I mean, that's where the game is going. But, um, yeah, Reggie Perry to the Brooklyn Nets. And Robert Woodard, we thought he was going to the Grizzlies, and then, boom, he's going to the Sacramento Kings. It'd been cool to have uh, Robert Woodard yes. at the Grizzlies. None of y'all are going to watch Sacramento Kings or Brooklyn Nets. So, no. um, I guess unless Kevin Durant dr- drives them to the uh they get James Harden that would be a sweet play pairing. uh right well they need to trade Kyrie Irving and maybe two other guys and and land Harden and see if they can make it to the finals against LeBron and uh Anthony Davis yeah um how about that SEC had more draft pick we're, we're a football we're a football and baseball conference absolutely loaded 
and the SEC had more draft picks than the ACC and Big Ten combined? Calipari kills it with his draft. Oh, my gosh. The Kentucky first-rounders are insane. Well, and and what about Bruce Pearl? Yeah. Uh, He's turned around Auburn. Well, I mean, you're talking about a top-five pick yeah. in the NBA draft. Georgia had the and, number one pick. That's insane. Well, that is. Anthony Edwards is an interesting player. I, I watched Georgia some, and, and, and he's talented. He's... he's Mm-hmm. We'll see. Um, not as many like shooters as I thought would have been in this draft because of the way the game's playing. Still, kind of a generation of <sighs> athletic slashers to the rim. Uh, not that you can't get better shooting the basketball by any stretch, but uh, I thought that was interesting. I was the dork that watched every pick last night of the of the first round. I only got a few in the second, then I had to go night night. But I couldn't believe they were doing the second round. I went, what? The I mean, it, makes, it makes sense not to do it today. I mean, because nobody cares. But 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 I, as I was sitting there, and I didn't want to get into Netflix, and there wasn't anything else on, and, and I'm a, I, I just, I love hoops. Um, it's such a big part of my childhood, and I just lived it and breathed it. I just, and I got to go to some really cool events and games and stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I'm sitting there going, they're going to do the second round starting at 9.30 or t- whatever time it was? Nobody cares. I know. I just thought that was weird. Also, the NBA draft is the short. Like, it's so fat. It's two rounds. It's 60 picks. It's done. Like, there's no. Yeah. You know, there's not. Getting drafted in the NBA is the hardest thing in the world because there's only 60 picks. Well, and the second round's not guaranteed. No, it's well, only the first round that's guaranteed. Well, yeah, but I just mean even getting to hear your so the, name called the is so hard. Almost like what Brian Tyree experienced last night, not getting drafted. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy for Perry and Woodard, and it is difficult, like you said. But you got to earn it. And you know, Terrence Davis and Q from Ole Miss and Mississippi State. I thought you nailed it. We've got more players that are kind of hanging around the yeah. the deal and the discussion in pro basketball. And that's what we're going to have to have for people to get excited. Um, Ole Miss doesn't care. Mississippi State did. Um, if they're both really good and they rip off, you know, five of six in conference play and you kind of feel like they're marching towards the tournament, it can bring some eyeballs in. But we look at the numbers and it just it doesn't move the needle. Now, look, I love, I told you earlier, I love going to an in, the Grizzlies or Pelicans game because I'm in and out in two hours. And it's nothing better than NBA Live. But college basketball, same way. About an hour, 52 hours. Get a good Ole Miss conference game or a good Mississippi State conference game. I'm all about it. This four-hour nonsense for Ole Miss and Mississippi State football, among others. I mean, we. I sure hope Commissioner Sankey and the others um, adopt the NFL clock sooner than later. All right. Live in the Bank Plus studio. Going to get back into some football for you and we'll have Steve Palazzolo on at um, 8.30, profootballfocus.com. We'll talk Breeze or no Breeze for the Saints and some other QB play. And then 9.30, Dave Bar 2, we'll, uh, we'll bring it on college football. You seem to want to get into some hardball discussion again. I love coaching carousel discussion. Coaching yeah. carousel and conference realignment are my two favorite things because they deal with hypothetical awesomeness. Right, it's like you, you never know what could happen. It's chaos. That we may give you a new nickname, chaos. There you go. Um, let's get back into Tennessee. If Jeremy Pruitt is, I don't even care if he's he's not dominated necessarily this weekend, but if it's proof that he the offense is not going anywhere, like Ray Tanner had 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 watched enough last weekend. I mean, I know their guy went for 225 or whatever on the ground, but it's not realistic to stay to uh, to to score with a passing team like Ole Miss. Just t- margin for error running the ball like that, right? Um, if Jeremy Pruitt's offense lays an egg this weekend, is that enough for Philip Attila the Hun Fulmer? To make a change at Tennessee, knowing that his colleague Ray Tanner, AD at South Carolina, is in the market for Billy Napier, Hugh Freeze, Steve Sarkeesian. And what is Jim Harbaugh going to do? We'll be back. I want to 
to have some fun with something today. Um, I'm going to give away two copper cups. Aren't, aren't they copper Tito's vodka cups? Yeah, they're uh, they're the like mule mugs, basically. Is yeah. what they are Moscow right. mule mugs. Yeah. Say that again. I'm sorry. They're like the Moscow mule mugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um, to give people an idea, I don't know of what, what was going like. on with the headset. So they're real cool looking. Yeah. All right. They're like hammered copper. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. We'll give away two of the a set, not yeah. four, but two. I, I want to ask. Our, I know we're a football show, and we're about to get into this whole hardball thing. Uh, Blake's got a a good topic on what's a better job, Michigan or South Carolina. I know you never thought anybody would throw that out, did you? <laughs> I'm, but but we've got some thoughts here. Okay, there's logic. <laughs> All right. But before I do that, because I have talked some hoops, and I love it, I want to see where we fall generationally. Text me who your favorite player is ever, all time. Magic, Bird, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan. I don't know. Wilt, Russell. Wilt. Uh, Dr. J. I loved I loved the 76ers in 82. They brought it home for me. Mo Cheeks, Andrew Tony. Was it Bobby Jones? Moses Malone? Dr. J. Yeah. Um, anyway, but will you text me your favorite player? All time. 601-885-3776. 885-3776. We'll pick one of you. You get two, uh, what'd you say? Moscow mules? Yeah, they're Tito's copper, copper Tito's. mugs. They're real nice. They're, yeah. they're quality. One thing about Tito's gear and merch that they give away, it is phenomenal. How about those Tito's Vodka Callaway golf bags we gave away last week at the Out of Bounds Fall Classic? I believe uh, Wally and Nick Fulton won those with their chip and putt. Wally made his putt of about 20 feet, which yeah. is incredible. Uh, let's not let's not stroke that ego too uh, much. Hey, Settle down, Wally. Great. Is the only person to make it. Oh, I, I know. And then uh, Nick, Nick and Andrew Brooks went back and forth. It was a battle. They chipped back and forth at each other. And finally, Nick won it with a, a chip of two foot, two inches, which is pretty good. Okay. Won their Tito's Callaway golf bags, and they are fresh golf bags. And didn't we give away a cooler? Uh, we auctioned off a cooler. Yeah. Yes. Joe Joe Knockin, who was a competitor in some of our cooking competitions. He won one. He And then he went to the championship in another one. But, yes. Uh, and, he, and I think he took home a helmet or two as well. Won a couple helmets. Well, that was part of the independent roofing crew who were big supporters last week of the Out of Bounds Fall Classic. Benefiting Extra Table presented by Tito's Vodka. Joe, yes. That's right. Independent Roofing, the number one commercial roofing company in Mississippi in the southeast. From uh, the Golden Moon to Nissan to the Beau Rivage, among many, many other cool projects. Independent Roofing. Independent Roofing. Commercial Roofing Company. Roofing.ms. Roofing.ms. Um, you want to get into... Uh, I'm going to throw it out one more time. Your favorite, your favorite basketball player of all time. 601-885-3776. Presented by Mississippi Act. Mine is, I'm not going Alex English, although I was obsessed with Alex English in 1984. I'm not going Sidney Moncrief, although I was obsessed with Sidney Moncrief as a 10-year-old. I'm not even going, um, ooh, let me think who else real quick. Obviously, Magic and Bird were rolling during that time. And uh, Adrian Dantley oh, with the Utah Jazz. I was obsessed with him. Sean Bradley, that's it, right? Yeah, Sean Bradley. I was also obsessed with DePaul, DePaul basketball, Dallas Comages and Rod Strickland and Ray Meyer Sr., but that's cool a whole other. They did. They did. And even though you really couldn't see on WGN because the lighting was terrible, <laughs> it was phenomenal to get to uh, DePaul basketball and Chicago Bulls yeah. basketball. That was right when Jordan started with the Bulls, which was kind of cool. Marquette's uniforms used to be amazing. Also, shout out to the three people who said Pete Maravich because that was my favorite player growing up before Steve Nash. Who was my favorite active player growing up? Okay. All right. The Canadian point guard. The Canadian point he guard. He was incredible. Is that your favorite player of all time? Probably. I mean, I know that's like, he, 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 we're not talking best player. I get that. But like. No, I'm just saying your he favorite was, player. He was my guy, man. You know why? Because for me, it was like I could be Steve Nash. 
not actually, but like in my mind, no, no, playing, no, I got it. playing as a kid, it was like I could. That's and that's what I tried to do growing up: pass the ball really well, shoot as well as I could from the free throw line, and just make you know make everyone else's life easier offensively as a point guard. I loved Steve Nash. I thought he was incredible. Oh, I love this. And, and by virtue, I loved Pete Pete Maravich, Pistol Pete. He was amazing. Okay, stop. Um, I, we just had a listener text in Charles Barkley. That's a man after my own heart. <laughs> well, he that's War Eagle Rich, who was at the event, by the way, Thursday night. Well, Charles Barkley is one of my favorite players of all time. May not be my favorite, but at Auburn, I loved watching him play. And with the uh, 76ers, but more importantly, in 93 against Jordan with the Phoenix Suns, and I was rooting for... Charles Barkley. There you go. And the Phoenix Suns and the Bulls and Jordan ripped my heart out. Yeah. The go round ahead. mound to rebound. Yeah. Loved it. Uh, Dikembe Mutombo. Love his finger wag. We Let's got his not. Name. Let's stop. Let's what get, do you mean? Uh, that's That can be people's favorite player. Stop. Why? Why? Stop. What? That's just ridiculous. If you grew up and like you were in Houston or as Andrew said, in Denver when he was playing, why, why can that not be your favorite player? I'm already bored. Let's go back oh to uh, gosh. South Carolina That's and ridiculous. Michigan. So Blake throws out in football, in football, what's the better job? And you could make an argument. I know this is nuts. You could make an argument that the better job is South Carolina. It's okay? not even an argument. First of all, money. I mean, it, Michigan's bigger, has a bigger endowment, all that, but still. South Carolina can pay a coach north of six or seven million if they want to, uh, eight million if they wanted to, um, or more. Location, prospects, players, assets, whatever you want to call them, everywhere. Not even close in comparison. If you're no. comparing Michigan, South Carolina wins that one hands down. No. Does South Carolina have a tougher schedule? Yes. Mm. But mm. Michigan, who believes that Michigan can get past Ohio State anytime soon? Or once out of every four years. Right. Not even close, right? Right. They're 0-14 now and 0-6 in the Harbaugh seasons. Mm. So, in my and my argument was during the break is that it's actually not an easier schedule at Michigan because he's 3-3 three and three against Michigan State the last six years. They're, they have been embarrassed in three of their last four matchups with Wisconsin. And they're, they're basically going back and forth with Penn State almost every other season. Mm -hmm. So for Michigan, even though they recruit well, they're, they are not even the second best recruiter, I don't think, in the Big Ten at this point anymore. I think Penn State and them kind of go back and forth. Wisconsin's up there as well. You're falling backwards at Michigan, and you can't ever, you can never win your division. Because you can never beat Ohio State. Well, here's here's the deal. I I, I disagree with you there. Um, just because he's losing to these teams, uh, they don't. Uh, several of them don't recruit that well. And uh, South Carolina has to play three top ten recruiters in Georgia, Florida, and A and M um, every year. And Tennessee's a top fifteen recruiter. But I do like it that that job's a better. I mean, they've invested in their facilities. You got sunshine. You're in the Sun Belt. You, uh, you your division is is so much better to play in, right? It's just the path of least resistance in the East compared to the West. It's a good program. It really is. And if you get an offensive mind that levels the playing field and understands the quarterback position, like a Hugh Freeze or a Billy Napier or maybe a Sarkeesian, does it matter that Georgia out recruits you by 15 spots? I'm not sure it does. Or that Florida gets you by about eight or nine it tells me that you can beat them every now and then um but it's a good question is south carolina a better job and what's wrong with michigan they've had three coaches that are good coaches go in there and they can't win rich rod hoke and and harbaugh and you know i think harbaugh's going to the nfl in a few weeks unbelievable steve palazzolo coming up next profootballfocus.com steve palazzolo coming up next profootballfocus.com on the Out of Bounds Show and the uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale guest line. Steve Palazzo on NFL quarterbacks. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. Back in a sec. Hey, y'all. The Y'all Lifestyle Shop in the Township is open Tuesday through Saturday. Have you started your Y'all Lifestyle game day collection? What about your Y'all Lifestyle barware collection? Come check us out at the Y'all Lifestyle Shop in the Township by Nukes. 
or online at yalllifestyle.com. Get your wine totes, whiskey glasses, and tailgating essentials at the Y'all Lifestyle Shop in the Township by Nukes. Is this thing working? Give me some sound, baby. Yeah. The Out of Bound Show is powered by the award-winning golf courses at Dancing Rabbit Golf Club in Philadelphia, Mississippi. All right, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. The show is brought to you by 49 Tire. Driven by the Continental Tires. 49 Tire, Richland, Mississippi, 49tire.com. The show is also brought to you by Went McGee, the mortgage man. He'll shop the best rates for you. You're buying a new home, condo, house, refinancing, mortgagemanms.com. If you're buying a place at Portico in Starville, New development, three minutes from Duty Noble Field, where guys like uh, Will Clark, Raphael Palmero, Jeff Brantley, Jake Mangum, among others, have played. Not bad to wake up in March knowing that you're three minutes from Duty Noble Field. Portico development right behind the Hilton Garden Inn and Suites in Starkville, Mississippi. Zero lot line home starting at $290,000. Portico development, Starkville, Mississippi. Out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone. We welcome in our friend Steve Palazzolo, ProFootballFocus.com, NFL insider. Steve joins us on the Abita Andy Gator guest line. And, uh, Steve, well, let's start with um, Houdat Nation and the Saints play the Falcons this weekend and Drew's coming off ribs and lung injury and, you know, we're just not sure what's going to happen there over the next four to six weeks. Um, what... What do you think Sean Payton is looking for, and do you really believe that this is a job interview for Jameis Winston going forward? Yeah, I think there's something to that. You know, I'm, I'm calling it Tameis, by the way. It's, it's going to be a combination of Taysom Hill and Jameis, I believe. I, I think you're going to see even more, even more of the Taysom Hill package, I think, you know, with, with Jameis starting. But, you know, again, the Saints I, – I, are we all assuming this is it for Drew this season? You know, hopefully he can at least get back out on the field, make a little bit of a playoff run. But if this is it, yeah, the Saints have to start looking forward. And, uh, you know, Sean Payton's been so complimentary of Taysom Hill to the point where it does feel like he's talking him up as the next guy. But there's other evidence that when he has a Teddy Bridgewater and now when he has a Jameis Winston, those guys are the backups. So um, I do think, you know, if Jameis shows well, whether it's three weeks, four weeks, or whatever he has an opportunity to show, uh, yeah, this is a, a chance for Jameis to maybe be the next guy in New Orleans. And it, he's a completely – I mean, he is the polar opposite of Drew Brees. So we'll see how that fits into the same system this week. Oh, I don't have a lot. Well, I have confidence that Sean can figure this out and win some games just because he's so good. But uh, I kind of think at this point Jameis Winston is – is who he is. How do you see it? So, so, so Jameis is what he is. And it, I, I wrote an article about this last year on PFF.com. So he is who he is. And what he is, is using PFF terms. We grade every single player on every play. He's a guy that has a high percentage of positives and a high percentage of negatives. So, it, it's, it, again, it's the opposite of Breeze, who annually leads the league in lowest percentage of negatives, just doesn't miss throws. But it's not like he's a league leader in positively graded throws. He also has he's a, he's a guy that will, you know, take check downs and screens and short stuff and allow his playmakers to do work. So with Jameis, a volatile throw for throw quarterback, that can lead to an incredible range of outcomes. They could be really good, they could be really bad. But I think if you take that skill set that Jameis has or style that Jameis has and you put him with a good play caller like Sean Payton and now a good group of playmakers. You know, they haven't had this group the entire season when Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders are out there together and Jared Cook. I mean, they've got decent – and Kamara, of course. They have guys to throw to. And I think Jameis's volatile style could lead to fireworks on the positive end, right, if they could just, you know, rein in some of the negatives. So, um, I'm not ready to write Jameis off just because of his style. I'm fascinated to see how this is going to work with the Saints and if Sean Payton will play to his skill set a little bit more and actually attack the ball, attack with the ball down the field more than they were able to do with Drew Brees under center. I find it hard to believe that Sean Payton really believes that he can make Taysom Hill into a even top 15 to 20 QB week in, week out in the NFL. Steve. 
So I would view it like this. You know, I, I use this for Kyler Murray quite a bit. Kyler Murray last week with the Arizona Cardinals had one of his worst passing games of the season. The Monday night game that Kyler played against Dallas a few weeks back, he was like nine for 20-something, and it wasn't his best passing game. But the offense still produced in part because of his legs. Uh, so if you do have a run-first quarterback, and Kyler's completely different from Taysom, obviously, as a runner, but if you have a quarterback that at least can, you know, whether it's in the design running game or from scrambling, they kind of create this baseline, this floor for your offense. Even on their worst days passing, the offense can still move the ball. So I could see Sean Payton maybe thinking along those lines and saying, well, we're going to completely change our offense. We're running QB power and counter and the play action that comes off of that, and Taysom's got a good enough arm, and I'll make him into something. Like, I could see Sean Payton talking himself into this, but overall, I agree with you. It's going to be quite challenging to take a 30-year-old H-back slash special teamer slash quarterback and spin him up into a top 15 quarterback. I, I do think it's going to be a challenge, but I could also see in Sean Payton's mind where he's talking himself into it and saying, I'm just going to run a completely different offense, and, and, and I'll get him there. Oh, Oh no! I, I need a I need a free agent coming into New Orleans um, in the offseason. I would season. do both. I mean, I would I would definitely grab somebody else and try to develop them. But I could see Sean talking himself into it. Sure. You? Oh yeah, yeah. And it would be a mistake. As good as he is, and as as much as he has even improved, in my opinion, as a head coach the last six or seven years, um, that that would just that's a bad play. He needs to go get one of these dudes that that he can make a lot better that can. They can throw the ball. I wish it'd be Dak. I don't think it will be, but there'll be several others, as you and I have discussed. Uh, Steve Palazzolo, PFF.com, Pro Football Focus, NFL Insider. He joins us on the Abita Andy Gator guest line. And he mentioned Kyler Murray. We have Murray and Russell Wilson tonight as our NFL game, which is exciting. Blake has a question for Palazzolo. Uh, yeah, Steve, when you mentioned guys that move the football and run the football. So there's Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, and then I guess Russell Wilson for the most part. I mean, he's really used his legs well. What is there one of those guys that you lean more towards? Lamar's really struggled. I don't know if that's Greg Roman and his scheme. I don't know if that's defenses getting wise to what Lamar doesn't do well yet. Um, what What is the actual mold of running quarterback that you look for in terms of how much they actually use their legs? I mean, just using those four guys, they're all so different and unique. And, and, again, I think if you have one of those players, you just play to their skill set, right? So with Lamar, you know, I wrote about this right when he came out of the draft. I said, look, he's not accurate. He's not going to be – he's not going to sit there 50 times a game and pick you apart with pinpoint accuracy. But if you use him in the design running game, you use him, you know, to, you know, to run QB power where he's going to keep it and actually be part of your running game, then he'll have success because the, play, the passes that come off of that run action are going to be more open. And then you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be accurate. Plus, just Lamar is just such a dynamic open field runner, agility, speed, and all that stuff. So he's a design run type of guy. Kyler, and, and Lamar doesn't love to scramble, believe it or not. He doesn't like to just run around and make plays. But, you know, it's, it's, it's more of the design running game. With Kyler, they're, they're getting a little bit more. They're getting both out of them this year. You know, they're using him in the design game. He's dynamic as well. We've seen it with, what, nine rushing touchdowns so far. Um, <clears throat> but he's still going to win from the pocket a little bit more often. Josh Allen's more of a scrambler. It, you know, you can use him, again, to, to keep it every now and again. But it's, it's more his athleticism um, on dropbacks that has been really difficult for defenses to defend. And then Russ's ability is just picking his spots. You know, they're not – they're not building. Like, he's a pass first quarterback. He's going to win from the pocket more often than not. But oh, by the way, when he gets outside the pocket, he's going to create big plays. So, I mean, I think the Russell Wilson style is, is the most favorable one because he's the best passer out of the group. And then the running just becomes a compliment. But I like the fact that a Kyler or a Lamar or an Allen, if they have a bad day, they might still pick up 70 yards on the ground and, and find the end zone. Whereas, say, a Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen a couple of years ago or, you know, Kirk Cousins. If they have a bad day passing, your offense is sunk. You know, you're pretty much not doing anything unless your running back goes for 200. So I, I think all those guys just have different styles, and uh, but you still always have to try to win from the pocket first. How concerned should people be with the way that Lamar Jackson is playing? Or I mean, is this what he is, throwing the ball? Or is there more 
that they can do as far as he's still young and reps and development, Steve? Yeah, so I think I think too many people look at quarterbacks and just they, they think of it like Madden and they think the quarterback's just going to get better every year, right? And, you know, in Madden, they, they, they come in as a 75 and then they're a 78 and then they're an 83 and before you know it, they're a 92 and that's what they are. Um, quarterback play is not just linear and, you know, so Lamar having such a good second season – didn't mean, wow, look at this. He's an MVP in year two. He's going to get better in year three, four, five, six. Um, it is a constant battle to stay consistent, to uh, handle what the NFL is going to adjust to you and throw at you and everything. So I think Lamar is definitely closer to this than, you know, what he was last year. Um, last year, everything just went so well. The running game was spectacular. The pass game off of it was a perfect complement. This year, I think we're seeing they're, they're missing tight ends. Uh, you know, they, they don't have the same weapons you know, that they had last year. And the running game hasn't been as efficient, even though they have a lot of yards. So I think Lamar is closer to this, but he's still more than capable of producing. Um, I just don't think you would expect MVP caliber numbers. You know, he had 9% of his passes found the end zone last year. That's absurd. Like, that was automatically going to regress this year. Um, so a lot of things that he did last year were just unsustainable. So he's still a really good quarterback, but – we're in that cat and mouse game with the NFL right now. How is he going to adjust? How are the Ravens going to adjust? Because it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to look as easy as it did last year when he won the MVP. But he's got, he's got great people around him, right? I mean, you're talking about a top, a great owner, great front office, a Hall of Fame coach, or we, we at least think so. Um, Lamar has more advantages than probably 25 other guys in the league, or you disagree with that no I agree with that I think you know uh, John Harbaugh has done a really good job he kind of went from a conservative coach to almost the poster child for just going forward on fourth down <laughs> and last year we saw the Ravens when they went for it on fourth down they they got it more than more often than not you know, that was also difficult to sustain so all of a sudden you just have more downs to play with um, Greg Roman's been a great offensive coordinator but he has had offenses with Colin Kaepernick a few years back that the that the NFL adjusted to. So he does have to find a way to adjust back to what the NFL has been doing. But overall, the situation is really good there. Okay. All right. So that who he is surrounded by is a factor, right, as far as what he is and his production level, starting with owner, front office, head coach, you know, so on, Roman. If you dropped Dak Prescott with the Ravens, I'm not saying they run the yeah, same I mean, offense, the- but he's surrounded with the, this winning culture. Uh, and what Ozzie Newsom has left in the, all this stuff, Biscotti and so on. Uh, who would you take? If you, could t- if you had the Ra- all the stuff that the Ravens have in place, would you take Lamar or Dak? Oh, man, that's close. I would, so I haven't seen the, like I've seen them with Lamar is the thing. And I've seen them build an offense around his skill set. I would assume that they would do the same thing with Dak. It wouldn't be nearly as much running. Um, I've always thought that, you know, you want to you want to have Dak run four, five, six times a game, pick your spots and, you know, steal three or four first downs, right? And that's his best use as a runner, but he's still going to win from the pocket a little bit more. I think I'd, I don't know, I, I, I like what I've seen with them and Lamar. I'd probably lean Dak in part because I'm on Mississippi radio. So I'll lean Dak for now with you guys. Um, because, but that, that's trusting that Harbaugh and Roman and the whole organization is going to build around his skill set more. They would need better receivers, though. Right now, Lamar did a lot without name receivers or tight ends. They built the system around him. They created open throws, but it's not like he's got incredible playmakers. I think that's coming back to bite just a little bit this year for the Ravens. All right. Fair enough there. So so it'd be super, super close um, with Dak and Lamar. If you gave them the rave, all the Ravens stuff, culture and everything that they put in place. Uh, Blake mentioned, um, Blake, you mentioned Cam Newton. You know, he kind of is, I, I think you're you're advancing what Steve Palazzolo is saying, pff.com, in that at some point Cam is what he is, and he just wasn't going to be any more accurate or refined yes. from the pocket. His is MVP, that where you're going? His MVP season was his best season, not indicative of growth. Okay. Okay. Steve? Yeah, I mean, that's – yeah, I, coming – coming into the season I said look Cam Newton has eight years in the NFL one was exceptional one was that MVP season 
And everything else, he was a middle-tier quarterback. That's just where he's played. You know, throw for throw, that's what he's been. And he's another jameis type of volatile quarterback. And, and I, I have a soft spot for those guys. A guy like Jameis, a guy like Carson Palmer, who I would say he makes great throws. He misses a lot of throws. But those guys have those, like, one or two outlier seasons, right? So Carson Palmer was 2015. He was an MVP candidate. He looked incredible for the Cardinals. That was the same year Cam did win the MVP. He looked incredible that one year. I, that's why I always lean toward it. I think Jameis has at least one or two of those years in him where everything goes right. All those great throws, like, all those great throws show up in one season, um, and he cuts down on the negatives just enough, right? Um, but, that's, but, but Cam, I think you look at his career and you say, okay, you have, to, you have to maximize his value with the run game like the Patriots have. He's not going to drop back 40 times and beat you. And he's a middle-class type of quarterback, or, or passer at least, middle-class passer. And you have to know that. You can't say, well, he's an MVP. We're going to get back to that. It's clearly the outlier in his nine-year gotcha. career yeah. at this point. Okay. Uh, Steve Palazzolo, PFF.com, super side on football, NFL and college for that matter, pro football focus, PFF.com. He joins us on the Abita Andy Gator guest line. Uh, Breeze is out. Of course, Dak's out. Uh, we've got some other injuries throughout the league. But, uh, again, some of the studs are still still rolling. Rodgers, uh, Russell, Mahomes, and and some others. Blake? Yeah, if you're Sean Payton and you're going to probably pick in the 20s, I would think. Ooh. Um, if you're picking in the 20s and Drew Brees is done and you're not sold on 30-30 club award winner Jameis Winston, what? who do you pick in the 20s at quarterback, assuming we think six guys are going in, in the first round like we've talked about? Or if you go free agency, who is your free agent target? Well, I mean, Dak, Dak is the prize of free agency until he's locked up, right? So but until they can't Dallas af- makes a move. They can't afford him, can no, they? they- uh, probably not. They're in, I, I don't know what the Saints are going to do. I mean, I think they almost have to – I don't know what cap magic they're expected to perform, but they're also going to they're going to lose a ton of players either way, a guy like Marcus Williams at safety, and it's really going to be tough to just lock up that entire draft class from a few years ago that was great. I mean, I really think they're going to be in this, like, bring in a Sam Darnold, take a flyer on him, take a flyer on a Marcus Mariota, um, or bring Jameis back. The, the same – I think those guys are capable quarterbacks, capable mid-tier-ish type of quarterbacks in a same system that could perform. Um, I think that's where they have to land, at least now, until they try to get out of salary cap hell. Um, and, it, and it might be a combination of a Darnold, a Jameis, and a Taysom Hill, right? I mean, we'll see how this experiment goes in the next few weeks. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be really challenging for the Saints. I, I think draft-wise – I don't know if Kyle Trask or Mac Jones are really top half of the first round type of players. I think Trask is probably bottom half of the first or closer to day two. So maybe end of the first round, you grab one of those guys and see what you can mold there. But um, yeah, it's going to be a challenge for the Saints given all the different roster turnover plus just figuring out the QB situation. Was Let's switch gears a little bit. Aaron Rodgers is still a top three QB in the league. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I love, I, I do love your approach theory, Steve, that franchises need to continue to draft QBs. I mean, they're just that important. So having said that, was the Jordan Love draft pick in the first round for the Packers the right play? Or should they have, you know, drafted a wide receiver or a tight end weapon for Aaron or an edge rusher? How do you see that? Yeah. That's one of those situations where, like, I don't hate the process of getting a quarterback, but the Packers are in such a unique situation, I think, where they need – like, Rodgers is still capable of playing top five, top three football, and you might only have a three-year window with him. And you look at that roster, and it's like, well, we've got Devontae Adams and nobody else. And Rodgers had not produced at a high level since he had Jordy Nelson and other weapons to throw to. Uh, so you almost had to, I think, add more playmakers, you know, to, to the Packers. And then there's the fact that I just think Jordan Love, you know, was a questionable first round pick in general. I thought there was so much volatility to him. Now the NFL has done a nice job the last few years of taking arm talent type of guys and getting the most out of them. Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, guys that felt 
volatile and had quote unquote upside, those hadn't went been working in the past. Those are the guys that were all bust in previous years and they're starting to work out a little bit more. So maybe the Packers are onto something and they can sit and develop Jordan Love. So we'll know more once he finally gets to play. But my initial instinct was definitely add more playmakers and, and try to maximize this last little stretch of Rogers run here in Green Bay. That makes sense. Okay. Tonight's game, DK and Russell Wilson against Kyler yeah, Murray I, and DeAndre Hopkins. I think it's going to be great. I, Wilson's coming off his worst two games of the season by far, but I don't think that'll be a trend. I think he'll bounce back. I think he'll spread the ball around, make some plays. Looks like Tyler Lockett's questionable now. That DK got shut down, not shut down, but he didn't do a whole lot against the Cardinals except for track down Buda Baker. Um, so I'd expect more from him in this one. But the Cardinals have those big, tall receiver uh, corners that match up better with a DK than say they match up with Lockett. So I think the the other receivers are better on paper for Seattle. But I think. After last week where DK didn't do a whole lot, I think they're going to try to force him the ball early and often. Out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone. Steve Palazzolo, PFF.com, joins us on the Beta Andy Gator guest line. And we have, uh, man, that's fun tonight. Kyler, Murray, and Russell Wilson going head-to-head. Blake, do you have a fantasy question or something else? Uh, well, I, I do want to say tonight's matchup, I mean, how much does this dictate or does it impact what, the 49ers are thinking with Garoppolo when you look at uh, what Kyler Murray is for the next 10 years. I like it. Russell for at least five or six, and you don't really know what McVay is doing with golf in L.A. It's, man, that is a really good question because, I, I again, I always throw this mid-tier quarterback phrase out there, and Jimmy Garoppolo is clearly there. I mean, Jared Goff <laughs> is there, too. I mean, that's, that's what they are, right? Um, and then you say, okay, when you have a Sean McVay call and plays for you, Jared Goff can perform, or you have Kyle Shanahan, who has – Kyle Shanahan made Matt Schaub look really good, or that system made Matt Schaub look really good. It's made Jimmy Garoppolo look really good. But the one time Kyle Shanahan had, had the quote-unquote top eight guy was Matt Ryan, and in, yeah, at 15 was a struggle. But 2016, Matt Ryan almost broke the league in one MVP statistically, right? Um, and that was Kyle Shanahan with a top eight, top five type of quarterback – and he turned him into an MVP candidate. So I think Shanahan might start to lean that way. He also had RG3, right? The Shanahan's had RG3 in that rookie season, and they built the run game around him, and the play-action game was on steroids that year and creating a, a ton of explosive plays. So I could see Kyle Shanahan thinking, man, I got I to gotta compete with Russ and with Murray, and I, I got to keep up with it, and it's going to be tough to do with Garoppolo. Because if you look at last year, they're like a throw away from winning the Super Bowl but so many things had to go right for the 49ers to get there last year. Having a better quarterback allows you to not have all the other stuff be as right. It just gives you more of a baseline and uh, more margin of error. That's it? Oh, man, that was 22 minutes. I thought we were like 15 minutes in. All right. I was about to ask Palazzolo <laughs> if Matt Ryan was a dinosaur in what the game is today and other quarterbacks no, like that. No, he's still pretty good. Okay. He's okay. And he's, and he's protected in a dome, so that always helps. Bam. Steve Palazzolo, PFF.com. Follow Steve on Twitter, too. He's a great follow, at PFF underscore Steve. Uh, have a good weekend, my man. We appreciate it, Steve. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Steve Palazzolo, PFF.com, NFL insider, but more importantly, NFL quarterback insider, because that's, what's, uh, that's what is the 24-ounce New York strip every year every weekend for us while we're watching the red zone and uh, seeing all the quarterbacks play. You got DK Metcalf tonight on your TV in the Seattle Seahawks. We'll be back in a minute. Hey, Wint McGee is the mortgage man, and he'll shop the best rates for you when you're in the market for a new home, a condo, or a townhouse. Wint McGee, the mortgage man, visit his website, mortgagemanms.com, and he's with the Bank of England. Wint McGee will shop the best rates for you. Whit McGee, his number, 601-906-7074. Bank of England Mortgage is a division of Bank of England. NMLS 418-481. Member FDIC. Equal housing. 